Welcome to the September 12th, 2023 meeting of the Hadley Housing Authority. On my agenda, we have topics not reasonably anticipated 48 hours in advance of the meeting. Um, I have one just to start with. Uh, we have a finding from the uh, Attorney General's office that this board was in violation of the open meeting law back in December of 2022. The record of uh, that finding will be placed with the minutes of today's meeting in the public record. And if the board so chooses, we can have a separate meeting to discuss the finding and how to uh, have perfect behavior in the Attorney General's eyes uh, moving forward. So for the time being, I'm placing this document from the Attorney General or the Assistant Attorney General's office into the minutes for the public record. Further discussion may follow if the board so chooses. All right, any other topics not previously anticipated? Chairman? Yes. I would, I would like to bring up the newspaper article in the Gazette, but I don't know if we want to discuss this now or further on in our agenda. Uh, it, it, it came in the, it came out. I'm not asking you. When would you like to discuss it? Where would you like this? Not just that we'll put it off. Well, let's have more concrete. Okay, let's set a meeting date for later this month. Um, is there any other I don't, what? I don't understand why, why we can't fit it in today. All right, we'll leave it for the end of the meeting if we have time. This meeting is not going to go three hours like last month's meeting. So I've been asked that we finish this meeting in a reasonably timely manner. So uh, and there's not, no urgency on that one either. So, right? is there... so a lot of us feel there is urgency on it, yes. Absolutely. Because it's an incorrect, it has a lot of incorrect quotes. It has a lot of incorrect that information. Article, I thought you meant the recent article on low-income housing. No, housing. the one about that was written about. Oh, okay. Um, we're going to have to put that on the agenda for discussion. It's not going to take a little time, I can tell. So, I wish I had known a few days ago that you wanted it on the agenda to put it on. All right, so let's, let's keep it at, at hand. Anything else that we isn't on the agenda? All right, approval of minutes. The minutes are massive this month. Uh, if we didn't actually have time to review them individually, I would say we table the approval of the minutes. Did everybody have time to read through the minutes? Yes, make a motion. I'll make a motion to table. I have a second. I have a motion and a second to table the minutes to the next meeting. Any other discussion? We're off the water. All right. So uh, let's have a vote on that then. If there's no further discussion, all in favor of tabling? Aye. Uh, All right, it's unanimous to table the minutes. I think that's good because we really do, do want to review the minutes carefully. Executive Director's Report. Pamela, you're up. Barely, barely, barely. All right. Well, not to Counter's not going to pick this up. No. What's that? At the Lower State Golf Club. We can hear you, but but the public likely can't. But that's okay. It won't pick up. No, we'll not pick up. I hope we both. I don't. Can we table the executive director's report? Anything? Anything urgent, Pamela? Did you know that? Okay, so she's asking to table because of the technical difficulties. Does that affect the bills getting paid? Does that affect the bills getting paid? No. Okay. Uh, treasurer's report. We don't have the treasurer here. Vacancy report. I'm the treasurer, by the way. Well, oh. Yes. <laughs> then right with everybody, we're going to try to schedule a second meeting this month in a couple of weeks if that works for everybody. 
That will be will that be our end of September meeting? Because this is really our end of August meeting. Right. Right. <laughs> okay. All right, Pamela. We're going to uh, table it and try to schedule uh, another all, uh, September meeting towards the end of the month. Okay. I hope you're feeling okay. Um, and it looks like the window project's almost done. Is that correct? Is this building the last piece? <laughs> okay, so the window project's almost done. Okay, but we're going to have a congratulations at the next meeting. Question? Please. We have information um, for the next meeting if the executive director take, uh, came in all this. Yeah. Can we also add to the executive director report the uh, hearing that uh, emergency restraining order the, in the court, visit to the police department, and Bruce Budrick's departure as the facilities manager? You're looking at me when you ask for protection. Yes, you can do that. That's fine. You do that, sir. Sure. Court order that, uh, or information. None of those things are under the purview of a board of commissioners. None of them. Well, I'm asking for the executive what director. Fourth. Did you hear for the, what he's asking? Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Um, commission, I want you to move right on to the commissioner's discussion. <coughs> right. So I have advertised for executive director and budget for search. So this is about advertising for a new ED and the people that an ED is going to hire. Uh, so that's the motion is on the agenda. No, the subject's on the agenda. Subject's on the agenda. Do I have a motion? Uh, before I have a question yes. on this uh, topic. Uh, two months ago, we were told uh, when I brought this up at the July meeting, that we could not advertise for executive director, minimum director, or anything because we were under contract. Now, if that's still the case, then I don't know how we can advertise if we're still under the arrangement with the Air Housing Authority, Mr. Chair. But that information from the attorney? No, that was from Pamela at our July meeting. She said we could no, not. No, it was not. At yeah, but please, please, please. Uh, Pamela? I recall that. I, I can't hear. Okay, I, I will repeat. I am the one that said that I misspoke. I I did not understand correctly. And then Pamela at the at the uh, August meeting on August 11th corrected my misspeaking. You were here. She corrected that. Yes, under a management agreement, correct? Under a management agreement, a housing authority board can okay. start the process of advertising. That's all yeah. I want. Thank you. So I would make a motion that we would advertise for either an interim or an executive director and budget the money for that. Well, I have a second for that motion. Second. Now we're at discussion. Discussion. Yeah, panel. Okay, I would, I would amend that motion that the read advertised for an executive director. Okay. Do you have a second? Any other discussion on that? 
Uh, oh, you already seconded that. I have some discussion. Please. We j did just vote at the very last meeting. Uh, we voted, I believe it was four to one on that. Uh, one two. Well, no, because you voted to not. Right, that's because I misunderstood. And that's okay. what I. Okay. Yeah. So we have already made a vote at our most recent meeting that we would not seek a new executive director. We also that's voted, true. of course, to enter into the management agreement. So According we, to Robert Rules, revisited. I looked at Robert Rules and said a motion to reconsider a vote may be made by a member of the board who voted on the prevailing side. So if the prevailing side was Richie, Reese, and myself, who misunderstood the question when I voted, it can be voted again. But but you you are asking at a later date. It doesn't matter. Okay. A motion can be revisited. And just to clarify. I believe we will be going ahead and re-upping with the Amherst Housing Authority and going out to look for a new executive director, as strange as that may sound. So uh, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? I don't think there's any laws preventing us from starting a search for it. Okay. All right. That's your right to withdraw that. I have not signed it yet. Okay, so we have a vote on going out to look for a new ED on the table. What's that? Nothing. Okay. Uh, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, no. 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 Okay. Three, two. For the record. Um, do we want to wait until we hear back from Amherst? Because we have the risk of losing Amherst now. Yeah. Yeah. I think we should just go forward. Um, Management agreement term of three years. I don't remember the agenda. Yeah. You did. Yes. Well, you were saying company. Okay. All right. So, all right. So, I'll pass over that then. I think we should discuss it. All right. Do you want the management agreement term to be with three years for whoever? We're signing up with. We voting. Pamela just said it, but we voted at the last meeting. It was a three to two vote, by the way. The newspaper had it wrong. I did not vote for an agreement. I know. And then they corrected that. But Pamela said we've already voted for the three years. So, uh, so what I'm hearing is that no matter, no matter is no matter who we signed up with, it'll be for three years. That's what we're voting on. Is that what you want to say? No, no the time frame. To one, two, three, six, whatever. Yeah. We're voting on the time frame of the contract, not necessarily who we have it with. Yes. They've already signed up. Yeah, okay. That's new to me. Good. Uh, well, the recent question if Amherst has already signed it, the panel says she's going to go back to them okay. to see if they want to continue this because we yeah. supposed to be, they didn't understand that we were doing exactly if you, Does this mean anything words, anymore than that? If this board reneges on a quorum vote from the last meeting and chooses to implement, a uh, reconsideration of the vote after we already, and this should have been signed on that day that we voted. Now they're talking about reneging. You might be, I don't know. It would seem I didn't like, say anything about reneging. I'm just saying I didn't vote for it. Okay. That's what I'm saying, but but you all are talking, down at that end, are talking about re-voting on a term You've already voted on a term. The, the chairman brought up about the term. Uh, the I didn't hear 
three year term. We didn't, number one, we didn't, really we didn't see it. We didn't see this contract. How can we get yes, something? Yes, this signature. contract, this exact contract without any signatures has been in your board packet multiple times. And a, a, an example of the most recent previous two contracts are also in your board binder. So I am still. Uh, thank So she's suggesting they go ahead and sign it and then let them decide what they're going to do. Yes, because the board already quorum voted. Right. That yes, don't we sign it. We haven't read it yet. It's just not it yet. That's uh, I'm sorry. Is what I'm saying. I am uh, well, I know you are. <laughs> Yeah. A this contract yep. was provided in the board packet for uh what did you say uh July and July. August. It's also in the board binder, it's been provided several times. So we've all had an opportunity to read whether we availed ourselves of that opportunity is a question. Okay. Some of us did, some of us didn't. So the thing is, we've already got a quorum vote that we're going to approve the contract. When you're approving a contract, it, it becomes legally binding by the fact of the quorum vote. Mm -hmm. The signature, I mean, in other words, this could be legally enforceable whether, whether you sign it or not, just like the previous one does. Thank you. So what Pamela is now saying is that the right thing to do to avoid any legal exposure here is to sign this. And then Amherst can decide based on what they see in this video today to go ahead and implement a 60 day out. Thank you. Does that make sense to you? And we have a 60 day out as well. Yeah. I thought, according to Robert's rule of order it could be revisited so can't we revisit the term the number of year term and have it up for discussion because if you can revisit the advertising for executive director why can't you revisit the management agreement term time she's saying no it's set in stone but i don't understand why she's saying let's hear what says. Um, Okay, I tend to agree. Okay, thank you. All right, so no secrets here. I'm going to be signing this, and that gives both either side 60 days to get out of it. Um, we have a motion on the floor of the. These are the ones that have to sign. What's that? Four copies. So that gives us 60. You taping this meeting? Oh, Tracy, are you taping this meeting? He's taking the video. 
Okay. Okay. I don't think it was legal to take. Oh, yes, it is. Is it? You want to go ahead and sign it so we can get this all? Do you think we should bring it up for discussion? No. Um, the very elderly thank you. So there's already been a vote to go ahead with Amherst, and now there's a vote to go ahead and set the uh, search for a new ED. Doesn't Amherst may or not. Amherst may give us their 60 day notice when they hear them. We're doing that. Uh, uh, hiring of our own attorney and a budget for this. We'll have a motion. Like a discussion. First, we need a motion and a second. If we want to hire our own attorney, for have it separate from the existing attorney. I'll make that motion. I'll second. We hire, we hire an attorney that represents the interests of the Hadley Housing Authority and its board in laying that open meeting law violation of a plan to be on that the attorney will take to look at plan for on our behalf. Okay. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Okay. It's a discussion on hiring our own attorney for the Hadley Housing Authority. Right. So, uh, I couldn't hear what she was saying. Oh, she, she she's going to listen. She, okay, yeah. she just wants to listen. I heard that, but she said something. We brought this up, hiring an attorney for the board in multiple meetings, and we've never gotten anywhere. I think hopefully today we can come to a conclusion if we're either going to hire one or not. It's one of those things like an independent audit that just does, it sort of gets lost in the shuffle. Great. Please. Yes, well, we have voted on this. We brought it up, discussed it multiple times, and we've already voted on this. And so what you're saying is you want to revisit it yet again about hiring an attorney. The point is, is we, we don't need to spend money we could use for uh for improvements in people's units and other things. It's just going to take away the time of our reserves, and it will take away money from our reserves. Let me clarify. We already spent money for an attorney. So is the idea of the motion to spend the same money but have it somebody who's independent from Amherst? And Amherst? Before I speak to that, uh, Risa said that it was voted on before. I don't recall it being voted on. I, was, I believe it was brought up, but I don't recall a vote. More importantly, the attorney that represents us or supposedly represents us is hired by the Amherst Housing Authority. That is an inherent conflict no, no, not to represent our interests in having yeah. because that attorney is uh, hired and works for the Amherst Housing Authority. I can clarify. You want me to clarify? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I Um, this is open case law violation. 
Okay, thank you. Pamela, let me ask you a question. I understand if there were any concerns with Hadley versus Amherst, we would need a different attorney. But is John Libel, is John Libel going to take up and represent us with this open meeting law violation, which I disagree with the opinion that came out of the Attorney General's office, by the way. Some of the Pam, some of the attorneys that you mentioned, I over the years I know have been the attorneys that have taken tenants to court for evictions. I'm well aware of some of these tenants who are strictly, you know, uh, I could say corporate or DHC D bound people. I don't think that they would be. We needed to talk with an attorney. I wouldn't feel comfortable as a board member going to a. An attorney that's been affiliated with DHCD, I think we need an independent thinker and somebody who is going to be more non-partial. Mm -hmm. But people with tenants, I mean, it depends on But I, I personally see a problem. Okay, thank you. Any other um, comments about this? So um, let me just suggest we never meet. I, I haven't met Attorney Leibold to my recollection or O'Connell. So, um, he, he have a deep September. Yeah, yeah, he's been here too. But you I weren't still sitting there. Yeah. Well, you weren't on the board there. Yeah. yeah. Well, if he's, the one, if he's the one that would represent the board on the open meeting law uh, judgment from the Attorney General's office, then I'm okay with that. If he's not, then my motion is going to be to have an attorney. To look at because I I think that's what should appeal that open meeting law violation that came out of the attorney general because I personally don't agree with I, I hear you. you I don't I'm not sure I understand it. Pamela, would it be um, unusual to invite one of the attorneys to our next meeting and have a uh, discussion about the uh, the finding of the attorney general's office and different courses of action that we might take to respond? Do you think? I'm Smith, and I'm the best lawyer for the law. And if I know he's going to be on. That satisfy an initial step would be to talk to our existing people and see. With one proviso, Pamela, I didn't get to read the complete Attorney General's opinion, but I think there's a time element involved with this. I think it's 30 days, if I recall. I'd like, and I'd like to see, instead of having an email to me, I'd like a hard copy of that opinion, please. But I, David, I don't understand if a, if a board member is sitting here with you and say that they know after living here for years 
that these particular attorneys are not are oriented towards the powers that be and not towards I mean I I just know from my from my, from a, attending court with many attended that was brought to court and because of that reason I would say that we're wasting time going with the attorneys from DHCD mm -hmm. we need to seek out our own counsel and we need to know where we can obtain the money and we have to and we have to do it quickly because it's a time right it gives 21 days on responding to the uh, I don't want to miss that window. Right. Yes, I don't agree with that opinion. Okay. Yes, Pat Lowe. Um, can I talk about the first hand for me? Um, I'm going to be liable to him in the case of the Commission of Champions. Would you like that? I couldn't. She wants to know if she has permission from the board to, talk to reach out to Lionel to ask him to personally call. Uh, Mr. Jack. Well, I'd also like him to look at the opinion from the Attorney General's well, office, sure. yeah. and I'd like a hard copy of that, please, because I, it's hard to look at that on an email, but I know that's time sensitive, and I don't want to miss that window. Yeah, so I don't agree with the opinion from the Attorney General's yeah, office. And the finding is against the, it was against the whole board. I can't hear uh, it's it's uh, a finding about the board with two specific members of the board violating open meeting law. That was the finding. Pamela was our executive director was not copied by the AG's office for this finding because she's not a party to this. But that's why we all got a copy. But. Are we on the, uh, uh, Harry, can you send it to Pamela and then she will print it out? Or, okay. Jay, well, this is it. Are we allowed to bring up where the open? He, he got, uh, David gave him, gave him, 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 him the copy. Him the public should know. David had the only copy. No. No. See, the issue in this complaint is that they're attesting that there was deliberation. There was no deliberation. I was merely passing an email of information. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me. I not, Thank you. We are. I'm going to discuss this really? in public meeting at a future date this month, within 21 days of the issue. So, um, I, I would like. I would prefer to have Attorney Libel come to a board meeting and talk to us all as a both as an educational exercise. And as a review of the finding, which I also have a hard time understanding, uh, agreeing with. But that's going to hold up time. We only have 21 days. Can you see if he's available in the next um, 19 days? Um, I know you're away. He's not. I know. But also, also what? The calendar is tied for the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Just okay. Well, you you guys are gone. Yeah, I can't join you. It found it, but uh, so, uh, maybe the second half of next week, guys. We got to stop this. Please. Um, maybe the second half of next week or the following week, if somebody had an hour to come in and talk with us, that would be great. Hopefully, we're all around. Thank you. Try. Hang on a second. Yeah. All right. Thank you. And I'm going to suggest sorry, this, that we um, this is going to hold time. Yeah, yeah, we're going to spend another three weeks or two weeks. Let's speak with our attorneys, see how they handle this, and see how we feel about putting out a plan for a new attorney or, or doing a search for a new attorney. Is that satisfactory or not? No, it's no, not. it's not. It's not for me. It's not because I'm naming the complaint. Okay, so I'm pointing to something. It's thirty days, and we've been ordered to release our emails where there was no deliberation, it was just passing on information about a contract. Yeah. Well, you can, you know, 21 no, days. 21 days if we appeal to the Superior Court. I'm yeah. not appealing this just yet. Okay. We have 30 days to respond. Yes. And if we meet with the attorney and he agrees that there was no deliberation, then we can appeal this. My, I'm, I'm mentioned in this. Yes, and I don't feel that I violated anything. So we are ordered to release the binding to the minutes. So I'm doing that today. Yes. Thank you. Uh, so I'm going to suggest that we have another meeting as soon as the attorneys can, an attorney can meet with us. And um, you still want to go out for the search? We have a motion in a second to go out for our own attorney search. 
Yes. Or do you want to wait to meet to, with our existing council and then decide? I think we should take the vote. Well, Pamela raised a good point. If there are any issues with Hadley Housing Authority with Amherst, yeah. then we would need our own representation. Yes. If there aren't, then we can use John Lytle. Yeah. Currently, I'm concerned with this, and if John Lytle or an attorney can handle this, yes. I want to stand. it. All right, so Pamela, you're going to um, explore which attorney in the firm handles open meeting law and uh, could come talk to us quickly, right? And if we have to do it over the computer, we could, but that is not preferable. I'm telling you as chair, that is not preferable. Thank you. And I don't mind table with any other attorney discussion that doesn't come into play okay. uh, so, right. Susan you're the second in the future and okay we wait until the next I think the, I personally think so we, it was brought up so many times that we should vote on it now and even if you decide to uh, include somebody from DHCD that's an attorney at mm -hmm. least we'll have voted on it and we can go forward quickly instead of waiting a whole other month to meet so let's get it on the table and vote and you can still have attorney live or anybody else from DHCD, but at least we'll have voted on it okay. and can get going. All right, thank you. Um, so, so, Harry, if you're withdrawing your motion. I'll accept that and withdraw of your motion until after we meet with. Yes. Robert. Okay, so, so we're going to wait three more weeks, two more weeks, whatever. Everything you say is wait. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, independent audit and a budget for this. Uh, it was asked, I was asked to put this back on the budget, not back on the agenda. So, do I have a motion for an independent audit and the budget for this? Not hearing a motion, we're going to pass over that. No, I'd like to. I'm not going to make a motion, but I'd like to say something. Okay. I still, over the last four years, would like to know that 1.6 billion dollars has been managed and and gone and bills and things. And if that's the only way that I can get that looked at, is through an audit, and I would make that motion because I've advocated for an independent, objective audit, not conducted or done by anybody that's paying our bills and everything. And um, so I, I, I still think that that's out there. I still think that I would like that look at. I also would, because I think it's another thing we brought up over and over again. There's a month between okay, meetings. Okay, we don't need a lot of conversation. Do we well, I motion? just think that it's... Yes. Then I'll make that motion. And then I'll see an independent objective audit of our affairs the last four years. All right, we have a motion for independent audit for the last four years and the budget to do that. And we have a second. Second. And then you further discussion. Yes. Reese. Uh, uh, absolutely. I have said before the money and Gary to pace our fee accountant of 27 years or something. Um, he said last time, what, July, the end of July when he came, that the money for an independent audit would have to come from our reserves. Our reserves after the window project bills are paid, as Treasurer, I can tell you, I've been asking these questions, will be 52%, will be down 52% from nearly 80% reserves. We cannot go, go below 36%, taking 16,000 or whatever. Was that the the amount that was quoted to you about 16 to 20,000 for a four year audit? 16. No, like, uh, 16. Okay, so if we take 16,000 bucks out of our reserves, we're going to be getting dangerously close to 36% reserve, which is kind of the critical balancing point. And we've got a boiler we know that's probably going to blow this next year. It needs to be replaced. 
and that has to come out of research. I, I am concerned about the financial health of Hadley Housing Authority, especially when, when some board members are very uh, interested in, in becoming self-managed again with a, our own executive director and a, for 16 hours a week and a, you know, a maintenance man for 17 hours a week. And it's not going to be something that's going to work very well when there's no money left in reserves to pay for things like boilers flush. Reese, I think you're using fear factors, especially people that aren't aware of the fact that monies are there and available for things like boilers that are blowing. When they're, they're, you can contact DHCD, there are funds to be had. And when you say things like this to board members that aren't aware that there's monies for things like boilers, you're, you're, I think you scare people into voting a certain way, and you should not use fear factors. As, as, as treasurer, and, and have a, as your treasurer on this board, I have already asked the questions, and it's already, Pamela, if a boiler blows, where's the money come from to replace it? There's funds. So that's the board. And at I'd like you guys to address the chair, yes, okay, yeah. so we don't get into angry back and forth between ourselves. So, Mr. Chair, Sue made an allegation. I should. What? Have it. Sue made an allegation directed at me, which is very inappropriate according to the code of conduct. So, well, clearly, I, I was correct. I believe my the funding cannot be used. No. We cannot get the uh, executive office funding to buy a boiler. As I said, it would come out of our reserves. As your treasurer, I know this. I am not using any kind of fear factor. But I know that you that you and Pamela. So please, I don't want the back and forth to be ourselves. Okay, it's very very. Well, hard. why is it I get I get oh, shut down all the time? Because you. Because I'm responding to her. Yes, instead of going through the chair. I'm sorry. I'm not a power of your person. But Harry, did you want to address? I will address the truth this year. Thank you. Yes. Um, every time this sort of thing comes up, it seems to be an extreme effort put forward to dissuade having an audit. Right. Now, does anybody else see anything wrong with that other than me? Because if there wasn't anything that, and I, I would not use the term inappropriate, no one's used terms of malfeasance or mismanagement of funds. I've merely asked for a review of our finances, independent of Gary the base and Lisa Fallon. Let me ask you this, Harry, do you need four years? Part of the problem is money here, what I'm hearing is, even though we already pay the existing people something, so there's some money available, and we should keep doing that. She went to, um, Can I just dance? I would like to speak. That would that help yeah, you I'm understand? I'm asking Harry a question about his motion. Jumping in. What? Instead of four years, do you want to consider a lesser time frame for the audit? 
to reduce the cost in two years satisfying the I'd go for the last three years of the contract. Set aside the first year that the board went into Amherst. I would take 21 through 22. Pamela has a point. Chairman. Well, hey, so, so, so Pamela's uh, defending our executive directors, defending the status quo way of doing the accounting and the auditing, and that it's been working for a long time, and that there's been no sign of, of mismanagement of money or malfeasance or anything. So, uh, so, Mr. Chairman, yeah. I made the motion in the second that if you want to call the vote, if it's defeated, I won't bring it up again. Okay. Mr. Chairman? Sir? As I said before, and I hope I don't get shut down, is the fact that this has been discussed over and over again, like Pam said, and we don't seem to get anywhere. And that's and that's what's so frustrating about these meetings is when we keep, is we bring up the same thing. And we, because of the fact that we, that we get shut down, we have to table it or bring it up in another meeting. Thank you for your comments. It's been voted on. Yeah. Okay. Nobody's been shut down. It's been voted. Really, thank you. Any yeah. other discussion? All those in favor of a two-year, three-year audit? Three-year audit. We have a friendly event. Three a three-year audit, independent audit. Say yes. I say four-year audit. Those are for discussion. The motion is for three years. Motion for three years. I vote yes. 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 No. 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 Okay, so the motion is defeated. And well, it won't come up again. It won't come up again. No. Um, um, is it going to no. Independent audit and budget in this. I voted no, that's correct. Uh, we're going to have to approach this question again in a different way. The tenant representative position discussion. Um, this had to do with you, Lise, and the question of whether or not we are hearing from you tenant issues at board meetings or not. And if we're not, why? And is there any mechanism that we can help get tenants uh, more comfortable or whatever it would take to speak with you so that we hear what's going on with the tenants? Uh, Pamela shaking her head. This is not how it's supposed to work. Right. May I? I'm, can I'm, I just address it? I let me finish my speeches. I'm trying to create a, a more dialogue between the tenants and management and the board. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so here's what everyone needs to understand the tenant rep position was created by DHCD, now the executive office, as a way to get tenant involvement on the board so that it's a respectful thing in other words that a tenant can actually would you please tell that woman there so it was it was created out of respect for tenants respect little bitty Little bitty story going back 
the big changes in housing went back to what uh 2000 something early right uh chelsea so chelsea yes so what had happened was there was a housing authority executive director who did terrible things to tenants not repairing they were living in swill he was all hooked into i mean it was really a bad situation the the feds came in because tenants complained it was tenants that saved those people in chelsea housing authority out of respect about patrick created this tenant rep position over the course of some years right and so a tenant rep says to tenants we respect tenant input we want a tenant to be required to serve on every single board of commissioners from the tenant's perspective tenant reps however do not bring individual tenant concerns to the board the board does not is not supposed to this board's a little not functioning properly but we are not supposed to bring individual tenant concerns or champion tenant clauses that is that is a function of a local tenant organization i strongly encourage tenants to to work together to form an lto but it's not the job of a tenant rep in fact it is absolutely contraindicated for any commissioner on a board to have individual discussions or make promises or discussions with tenants and other board members about doing anything we have a, a fiduciary duty a duty of care a duty of loyalty as commissioners to the legal and financial health strength and vitality of the business entity Hadley housing authority okay Thank you, Reese. Yes, Mr. Chair. I want to clarify that I've been told it is perfectly all right for commissioners to speak with tenants. Who so, told you that? So, if any, uh, so that would be friendly. Um, if, if any um, tenant wishes to speak to a uh, commissioner, they would. Commissioners not going to um, speak against, may not speak against policies and make promises to tenants or anything like that. Are we allowed to listen? And uh, I would encourage tenants to speak to whoever they're comfortable speaking with if there's things to be fixed. Pamela and management is your should be your first recourse. Yeah. So if you don't have satisfaction, when you think that things aren't happening as they should, then you are free to speak up as far as I'm concerned. Now I'll stand behind that. Harry. Mr. Chair, I'd like to just get a little clarification on the comment that this board is not functioning as it should or is supposed to okay. according to commissioner smith free i see that this board is divided in its opinions and interpretations of things and how they function i also have said that when the time comes and i'm not sitting here and maybe my brother richie's not sitting here that because there is no local tenant organization that tenants should probably take our spot and run their own complex and facility because they live here. They have a vested interest in what goes on here. And at some point when I step away or Rich steps away, I think more tenants like Sue came on this board, Reese is the tenant rep, can't speak for you as the governor's appointment. But I believe that when we are not sitting here, a tenant probably ought to sit on this board and run their own complex through whoever's manager, our own executive director and staff or Amherst or whoever. Good. So I want to be on record for that. I don't disagree with you. We say you're in a wonderful position, but you really pay more attention, I think, than everybody, to the rules and regs and all that stuff to educate other tenants so that there could be more tenants on the board, or if you decide to step off, someone could replace you. All right, we won't keep going on about that right now. Um, policy subcommittee report. Mr. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I wanted to address you on this. For four months now, I've tried to get the grounds policy and the common area policy on. Yes. And they have not been on the agenda. The this is order. This oh, is for the Papa. No, but I wanted to let him know. Point of order. Because before you talked again. For point of order, we're at the policy subcommittee. <laughs> I've been trying to get to. <laughs> this is about policies. It's called policy subcommittee. 
Number one, I've asked four times to have this on the agenda. I think four different months on the grounds policy and common area policy is order. is ridiculous. Order. Number two, we've already talked about not having a policy subcommittee because talking to Mel King and Mass yeah. Board, they suggested that board members, and, and now we still have a, a policy subcommittee on here, even though they suggested we all work in conjunction with each other, not have a subcommittee. Thank you, sir. Yes, uh, policy subcommittee report. Yes. Uh, Rich and I are on the subcommittee for policies. We uh, met, the, as I promised last time, our last meeting, that we I would give a report now. And it got delayed because last week. But anyway, uh, so the first time we met, Rich and I read through all of the local policies. That's everything that Sue just brought up, uh, plus everything else. The policies should be reviewed a minimum of every four years. And it's been since 2017 since these policies were, were reviewed. There's no notation as to if they were reviewed, so we just assume they weren't. So we're, we looked through every single local policy and we decided that yes, every local policy, and that's the ones that are only for Hadley Housing Authority, it's not including the ones that come down from the state, you know, from executive office we don't have any say about that basically we just as a board have to sign those but the local policies uh gardening you know the flower bed policy the common area policy there's all kinds of problems. we need believe they need to be reviewed so we have uh we're now on our uh third meeting we're going to meet again tomorrow but we have gone through, we picked two, and those were the two that Sue, you brought up, the um, the gardening policy and the common area no, policy. I brought up the grounds yeah, policy. Excuse me, I'm speaking. And, and so speaking. that, She's so we're, it's my turn to hear you. Well, Richie, he's part of the committee. So this is uh, the report, okay? But she was so, speaking. Listen. Richie speaking. Rich asked me to do it. She was a man. She's taking over the whole meeting. Yes. 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 The money's right here. Yes. She's a man. The money's right here. Right. And you're allowing her to do it. Yes. Rich, do you want me to give the report from no, the No, no, no. Let me speak. Yes, he does. Let him speak. Sue. Yes. Yes. Okay. Right. Calm down. I'm listening to the report. Please. But it's always coming from her. I'd like to hear from the other uh, person who's on the subcommittee. Sue? Who's that one? Please listen to the report. Yes. <laughs> so I've heard so far you reviewed all the local yes. policies. You're meeting again tomorrow. Do we have any draft revisions We're to under review? Draft. And uh, we, we found a template uh, to put the um, policies in. Uh, that that will make them more readable, et cetera, et cetera, and give reasons for the policy. So anyway, we're working on the common area policy, which was the source of, as Sue reported, much conflict, and the garden policy, which Sue, you've also said, was conflict. Uh, it, it was a cause of conflict, in your opinion, for, because of the window project. So uh, uh, we decided to take on those two contentious things that you brought to the board. So we're working with that. Uh, we do have to to look at the the legal, you know, there's laws and rules and regs that every policy has to comply with. So we're in that process looking at the laws and the rules and the regs right now. And then hopefully by the end, maybe by the end of September's meeting, we'll have an actual draft. And remember, it's a draft. It's not set in stone. It's ready for more input. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and, and even if you approve the draft, the draft does not become the policy. We, we when it gets into its final form, we want yeah. more input. We see what I'm saying? We understand that. Yeah, uh, Mr. Chair. So we're going to be getting all of the policies uh, one by one, drafts of your revisions one by one. Well, come on. It's a lot of work. So we're working on two right now. All right, and you and hope to have those drafts of the revisions to those two by the end of the month or, or next Yeah, week? hopefully. And then we'll, you know, we're already looking at, like I said, we already have a list of policies, all the local policies that need to be reviewed. 
And if anything needs to be substantially changed, we do the same thing. These are just drafts. In other words, words that all the hard work. Right. And then you, the board has to have input. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I would like to say that if Richie is going to be on the subcommittee, I would, I would like to hear from you occasionally and not have Reese just be the spokesman if you can maybe. And, and why is it that, it, Mr. Chairman, that it's not important to you when I brought up multiple times that subcommittees, when it comes to policy, should be done, should not happen. We should be working as a group doing this. Not that you can have one, but they suggested. Why even bother going to places like Mass Union and talking to um, Mel King Institute if they suggest we work equally, but then the subcommittee exists. Well, so they're, they're, they're working on it, but then they're going to give it to us and we're going to decide if we keep it, yeah. tweak it, or get, you know, or get rid of it. Wouldn't it be better if we just worked on it all together as a group cohesively at one time? So you're ignoring okay, the fact I, I that... You, right. Are you going to repeat again? Well, okay. nobody's listening to it, so it's... We're all hearing you loud and clear, I think. I so have, have come. Said yes, I'll comment on that. I have found personally in my 20 something years in public service, subcommittees can have a tremendous value. They do the preliminary work, they come up with um, options for the full board to consider and make their recommendations as to which option, in their opinion, is the best solution and why. And that saves the whole board from having to spend their time on the preliminary stages of the investigation or the work. So I'm hoping to see. But, you know, that um, that they haven't been wasting their time and that we get their draft, that they're good and that they're 90% of the way there and that our suggestions as board members will be incorporated if, they, if we all agree they make sense. But you, so yeah. please don't undermine or underestimate the value of a sub subcommittee. I was sort of hoping that we would take one or two. I've talked to you about this. You know, I did take your um, suggestions or your requests to the two of um, them before. And they, they are working on the outdoor policies first. I'm glad to hear that. Um, I would like to have at least one or two draft policy revisions at every subsequent full board meeting. So at the following board meeting, we yeah. can come in with our suggestions I think we and finalize that. these things, okay? It shouldn't be rocket. I don't know if you're looking at other housing, <coughs> housing authorities policies to see if um, they've done good things. But um, I strongly suggest you do look at other housing authorities' policies and learn. Uh, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Yes, please. Yes, I have, ju just for uh, just so as you know, I have spent and Rich, we we've been meeting every other week or sometimes weekly. I know I have spent a minimum of six seven hours a week since we started this looking at this in July. I, I don't know that, I mean, your time is at a premium, Harry's time is at a premium, maybe soon you have more time, in which in which case, please do send, you got my email address, send me information, and we'll incorporate it. One of the reasons I'm, well, so you, you can't just speak up like that, you have to wait. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, at least, thank you, yes, Sue. One of the reasons I'm I, I'm not for this subcommittee is because we have such a divided board. And because most likely, knowing how I think or vote compared to how others think and vote, I think that it's that's one of the reasons I another reason I have trouble with the subcommittee that now it it is part of a divided group Thank and you. not saying we're going to be divided forever in every policy but because this particular thing has been the, the divided group okay then i think that we're going to end up having to i'll respond to that by, okay, so sue you you're looking for uh, a fight all the time and i'm feeling like right. this telling policy exit excuse me this policy exercise could be a way to bring us all together because if we truly have the tenants i'm just i'm opinion if you're unable you know. to wait your turn and if I speak, I'm going to be taking a vote to ask you not to come to me yeah. soon. And that'll see how, you know, it'd be very unfortunate. So this could be an exercise that brings us together if we really all have the tenants, um, you know, benefit as our priority. Harry. Mr. Chairman, I'm just going to reemphasize that the policies affect all the residents and the tenants who live here. 
That's why I continue to say that the tenants should be on this board so they can decide how they want to punch in their own facility. Topic, but thank you. Yes. So the public message I want to um, relay is that the policy exercise should be a great opportunity for us to work together because clearly policies are set up to benefit the tenants. So please don't go into this soon thinking that that side of the of the board or this side of the board is going to dominate the policies. I'm just stating your opinion. That's not my opinion. That's what we say before. Right. Pamela. Yeah. So I That makes sense. Thank you. And I think that's laid out in the... Uh, yes, now we're functioning, functioning properly. No. Yes, now we're functioning. Thank you, Pamela. That makes sense. And I'm sure uh, Executive Office had a good question. Thank you, Chair. That person's saying, really, for this policy. The way it's going right now, you could never get through a way of making it. I don't know. Did you hear anything? Yeah, you can never do it. All right. Uh, I think the executive office probably lays this out pretty clearly. But we could review that individually if we can. If we think that Hadley should define our own subcommittee's task, then we can do that. Um, all right. So you guys are working and you hope to have one or two policy drafts. Two by this meeting. That's good. Now, move on to Hadley Code of Conduct. <laughs> What's, sorry, Rich. How about the policy? So we should have them done tomorrow when they go to board. Excellent. Good. Um, the last agenda item for today is Hadley Code of Conduct. That's mine. You inserted that? Okay, great. So the town of Hadley has a rather meaty code of conduct. So I'm going to ask all of us to read this. Um, even though the Housing Association is arms, Housing Authority is arms length from the governance of the town, I think it's all worth uh, re re reviewing this ourselves. If there's discussion, I can put it on the agenda. Reese. Well, we're on the on the agenda, so. Uh, okay. Sorry. Okay. But we haven't read it. Well, the board packet came out. I got notice of the board packet being ready. I think yesterday I haven't read it. Okay. Uh, uh, so the town of Hadley on, uh, well, they said 719 of this year adopted a code of conduct guidelines for town boards, commissions, and committees. And they updated on July 19th their uh, town of Hadley committee handbook. So it does impact us. We're not a, a board in the town. We're kind of in a weird position. We are created by state law. We're very separate from the town. The town has no say in our, our operations at all, but for appointing uh, and 
the town clerk elect, uh, putting on the ballot candidates to serve on the board. Uh, and also discipline of board members who violate ethics or whatever. So. You'd like us all to read this. I would like us all to read this, but something that would be a good exercise is everywhere, for instance, it says select for, for the code of conduct. Everywhere it says select board, just put Hadley Housing Authority. I did a, uh, I did a kind of a mock up that way, changing it to be like exactly for the Hadley Housing Authority. We might even want to consider to uh, adopting a modified version of Hadley's Code of Conduct that totally goes along with that Hadley's Code of Conduct, but it would be our own board of of um, commissioners code of conduct so that we make sure we don't have ethics violations open meeting law violations other kinds of problems and uh if we adopted this and helped each other to it then we would all be safe from accidentally violating open meeting law or what have you it also would improve the professional behavior or behavior of our board of commissioners on this board okay thank you so please everybody will you look at this code of conduct carefully see if you think it all would apply to us and um, we could adopt it as the hadley housing authorities code of conduct I mr will. chairman all right mr chairman uh, this is the town of Hadley's code of conduct. So if Risa is suggesting that we look at this and adopt some of this for our own means, maybe her and Rich can go through this and only put in where it would apply to the Hadley Housing Authority. Yeah. Because we have been told a number of times that uh, the Hadley Housing, the, the uh, Select Board, and the, uh, they have no jurisdiction over the Housing Authority. So if that is the case, and we're being presented with the Town of Hadley's Code of Conduct, this is really the Town of Hadley's Code of Conduct. So if it were revised in some way, shape, or form for this board, the Policy Committee, I think, would go through this and doctor it for our fast. specific yeah. needs. You guys want to go through it? Because I don't think yeah. you want any more of these things. Right. Chairman? No, no. Chairman? Yeah. I, my problem is that sometimes people on the board's code of conduct is happening outside the board meetings. It's happening in the community room, happening outside the, you know, across the facility. Where does the code of conduct come in? Is this code of conduct just for a meeting? Or is this for... Well, I'm just in, I'm saying, are we looking at just for the meetings? Or are we looking at board members that, that are acting? That's a reasonable question. Ridiculously let's, outside of yeah, our let's, meeting. Let's take a look and see what they've uh, decided that their committee members may and may not do out in public. Let's take a look. All right, guys, I was asked to keep the meeting short today. Um, if there's any other. We're we going to get back to the newspaper. Okay. Oh, uh, I'm trying to go to the newspaper. Alfred, 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 oh, okay. I can, I can stay talking well because I just, the right. traffic will be bad. Okay, so Sue, we're going to talk about the newspaper. Article. Well, the newspaper article was, had a lot of misinformation. It had myself quoted when I never had anybody come speak with me. If some of this came off of another board meeting that was previously, it was taken out of context, and it had a lot of misinformation. I don't know if anybody wants to chime in. Do you want to talk about the newspaper article that was... Well, I have, I have a couple of comments about the article to the chair. Yes. So, so that's what they're asking for now, if you want to. Oh, okay. okay. Do you have any action for the board? Please. Well, I was surprised, personally, that it came out in the paper with no knowledge of you, Mr. Chairman, that that was even being done, or that it was uh, checked with you on the accuracy of the information that was in there, especially on the vote of the contract, where I distinctly, over the last seven, eight, or nine months, have been advocating 
not in favor of money. Right. So you guys have an issue with the so, Daily Hampshire Gazette, I'm, right? I'm just curious why you were contacted and for, for the validity of the information that's being printed. Okay, I was not contacted. It sounds like you have issues with the Daily Hampshire Gazette. Not now, because they retracted the vote. They did? Yeah, they did a rebuttal to the vote. They got to the panel. They did. Yes. Okay. So thank you for reading those articles. And we should all be careful that the public sees the truth as much as possible. I'm going to mention, maybe I should, that there's a long history of the Gazette not that's always getting meetings exactly right. So please keep an eye on housing authority business. Anything else that people would like to bring up in today's meeting? I don't know. I do Public comment. Sue Oppenheimer acting as a tenant. I wish we had some things to bring up. Um, I know that I've lived here a long time. Many people have asked for changes in apartments. They have not been able to move to another apartment, always being told that the, the, if you're moving to another apartment, your apartment would have to be renovated, the one you're moving out. Just in the last six months, we've had three changes from tenants moving from apartment to apartment. That's one of the things I wanted to bring up. I wanted to just good or bad. Huh? Well, it's it's different. It depends on who you are. Many of us have asked for apartment changes and haven't got playing favorites. That I'm that one it is. And another thing I wanted to bring up is the fact that in the door of the of the office it said employees only. I've seen tenants come out of that office and they're not board members or chairmen of the board. And I know it's strict off, you know, you just can't walk into the office. But many of us have noticed a few tenants over and over having private meetings in the office. I, um, let's see if there's anything else. I guess that would be it for me. Okay, thank you, Sue. Sure. Uh, yeah. Did you want to speak, Pamela? No. Okay, good. Tenant, any tenant? Maybe you want to speak, just to identify yourself in your address, please. Yes, I'm Maggie Aldrich McCassey. I live at number 21. I'm one of the ones that got transferred from number 23 to 21 after putting in a very reasonable request legally to the housing authority because of my ability to walk now, and I was tripping over my entrance way and got hurt several times. That's why I was moving. Thank you. So that's a good thing? That's a good thing. Because right. I was put in, sorry, his name. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, I was put in an entrance way where I can now go in with this and walk without falling. Okay, and I good. appreciate the, what they did for me. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, Judy. I'd like to respond to that. Maggie's problem was a reasonable accommodation that wasn't being taken care of. She tried to do the, do it the right way by asking for a reasonable accommodation to the unit. Am I correct? To the unit that you were living. All they had to do was give you a ramp or whatever. But instead, they moved her to another apartment, and it is great for her. 
because there's no um, step. So it's working for her. The problem is the uh, reasonable accommodations are being done in with favoritism. Favored people aren't getting what they want, other people are not. Well, thank you, Judy. I have more to say, by the way, but I did want to okay. verify. I was given the option for a grant. However, I'm not going to get into discussion of with who or what was said mm -hmm. regarding it. However, the better thing was not the grant because of my walking ability and the ice on the ramp and whatever in the winter, it was a better option to take that. Other. Thank you. Good. Do you I, I do have something else to say. Um, Judy, we're on colleague number eight. Once again, I'm being accused of being behind in my rent. This is what other tenants need to hear and know. Would you please let him listen to me without your just interference? Go on, just go on. So, unknowing, unknowns to me, my rent has been changed. It's been increased, which I would have expected. The Social Security went up for us. That should have been done through the reasonable, uh, the recertification. Recertifications have not been done. So what I get instead is an yet another $25 late fee. This is something that tenants need to know as a group. If it's just me, then other action needs to happen. If it's happening to all of us, then it still needs action. This is not the way you do business. You send this, and I'm, I'm going to let you read this. It says nothing. Your rent is past due. Period. Where's my recertification? Okay. We're supposed to sign another contract. I have not been offered any of that. Yeah. Um, Judy, this is really between you and management. So again, <laughs> again. Well, you know. Hang on, hang on. So I'm going to ask you to do something rather than have these uh, complaints go on. Could you please write up your complaint and present it to management? And if management's response is unsatisfactory, I think then you're going to bring it to the board. I've emailed. It says if you have any questions, contact Mary Billion. I've sent her three emails with no return no acknowledgement whatsoever this is how this is how housing works it's not sufficient and it's not fair mm -hmm. <laughs> um but you have a grievance so, you have a grievance about the way your rent's being handled correct obviously yeah so obviously. is there not a grievance procedure that you can follow um Sorry, I'm making sure it's right. I don't know. Well, there is a grievance policy, but the management is in charge of grievances. And so I get nowhere. I'll get called into court. I'll get an emergency restraining order put on me for something I didn't even do. It's not, it's not tenant friendly. It's not tenant respect. We get none, none. So what I wrote up uh, for the last Tuesday was, last week I received this letter. Um, did I need under my rent? Um, and I just wanted to say a few other things. That last week was my birthday. And what I was hoping as a present to me is to move out of here. Is to move the hell out of here. I heard you. You heard me. Everybody else heard me. Um, <laughs> because I, at this age, and there are other people here that are my age, maybe, 
Over here. No, I'm not like sure. Over here. Over here. I think I can speak for them. I think what we want is to live in a place where we're respected, where we're treated fairly, not the favoritism that goes on here, not fearing every time management isn't getting their way, they get a, a, a attorney libel, you know, involved. This is not the way an elderly community is supposed to live. Right, you know, and and why don't you write up your thinking, your feelings about this, be as specific as you can, make copies for the board, and if we feel like it's uh, something we should talk about with management. Love it. I'd love, love to do that. Would you please? That would be fun. Thank That'd you. Great. We Thank wish you luck and happy birthday. Thank yes, you. Yes, Maggie. Yes, I want to make one statement about a wonderful job that they have done with the windings. This place looks like a colonial village. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to wait until uh, next week when the is all done. It's okay. Look, very deceiving. And even in this room, these women. Okay. Yeah, let's let's choose a date for the next meeting and then see what the last Tuesday of September. Last Tuesday of September is our regular date. Eleven o'clock. Let me just get the date on that. The twenty-sixth. The twenty-sixth. So that's nine twenty-six at eleven a.m. <laughs> Does anybody have a conflict with 11 a.m. and 9 26? All set. All right, that's going to be the next meeting. That's September 12th. And can we please go over the agenda, Mr. Chairman, before it gets sent in to make sure that I, it... I've been trying to send out the agenda before I send it in, but um, I can continue to right. do a better job on that, I'm sure. Can I just say one more thing? Okay. One more thing is a tenant, I'm speaking. Um, I, I really think it's bad public relations for our housing authority to be um, having our management be, you know, basically um, going after the select board in town, going after the senior center in town, and then also going after uh, the chief of police in town. Yeah. And then our own board having a, a board member that's also filed charges against her own board members after only being on the board for three yeah. months. So I, I think that this has nothing to do with, with being dysfunctional. This is just pure mean-spirited behavior. And I want you know people to know about it. It's hard for me to fathom that there's that much hostility going on. There's no other comments? I'm all motion. Donnie has something. Thank you. Second, we have a motion. Wait, wait, Donnie wants to speak. Donnie, I'm sorry. Okay. I'd like to see us break away from Amos. You'd like to see us break away from Amos? Amen. 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 Donnie. Let's get her. Thank you. 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 Thank you.